Welcome back to The Check-In. I am Jarrett, and today I'm joined by Tyler once again, and we're going to talk about stuff that happened last week. Now, Tyler's going to touch on some of the bigger industry and news that happened while I was at the Bitcoin conference, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about what happened and some of the bigger points that occurred at the Bitcoin conference. So with that said, Tyler, thanks for hopping on. Could you please give us an update on some of the items and some of the newsworthy events that happened last week? Yeah, excited to be back. Uh, there, was, there was some cool stuff that happened, some mining related, some not. Uh, one of the big ones was Proton Mail actually released a Bitcoin wallet. I think this is so cool because Proton is like a privacy first mailing platform and they have VPN services, they have all this stuff. And for them to be, I assume, listening to their customers and seeing that people want a privacy first way to secure their Bitcoin, like, yeah, it's great. I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of how this functions and everything, but they kind of kill it with their email service and their VPN. So I have a feeling that they're, you know, they've already thought through a lot of the great ways to handle Bitcoin. And I just think that's a really cool thing for, for them to bring to their customers. Uh, the second one is Fold. Fold actually went public. And I was an early user of Fold. I think it's really cool how they've evolved over time. Um, one thing that they've done really well with is they've, they've, changed a lot and iterated a lot and learned what their pain points were from their customers and coming from a product standpoint that's super cool they're they're always blasting out surveys always trying to hear what customers like from their service and just changing it over and over and over and one of the coolest things that they have released recently was they made it easy for people to pay their mortgage and their rent with with you know, their app, which allows you to get Bitcoin cash back in your wallet. And that's like, that's typically one of the largest purchases that or largest spend that people have every month. So if they can then get cash back on that, that's awesome. And that looks, that's a really great way to accumulate Bitcoin. And then the last thing I had on the list that is mining related and probably the coolest is uh, Bitax. This is a open source miner that people can essentially procure the parts, put it together themselves, you know, run the firmware or software on it, uh, or you can buy it from someone. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of companies that will actually assemble this thing and ship it to you. Well, it's like a solo miner. You plug it in your wallet, it uses almost no electricity, and you're just kind of rolling the dice to see if you can strike a block and make it big. Well, it's been out for a while and it happened. Somebody with a bit axe, mined a block and took home a jackpot. So that's really cool. This is like a very cool thing that's out there for decentralization that doesn't really, you know, affect your energy bill that much. So that's, that's very exciting. Yeah. I saw that bit X news while at the conference and other people were talking about it as we were in and around the mining stage and just the mining area. And that's super cool because depending upon when the price was, when this was hit, it's about $200,000 in Bitcoin that you got. And if you haven't seen a Bitax, we'll make sure that we throw an image up here on the screen. But it doesn't look like anything you'd write home about, but it is super cool that someone did hit an actual block. I wanted to ask about Fold app because I think you brought up the most important point, and that's something that I've read as well. If people are using their mortgages, and that is normally for most people on the planet, and definitely for thinking about the United States, that is gonna be one of their biggest investments, right? Their mortgage is the thing where they have most of their wealth or most of their equity, uh, maybe outside of a 401k or some other traditional uh, financial uh, uh, you know, portfolio type thing. So I thought that, that was really cool. And all of those things are kind of going into maybe some of the conversations that I saw happen, happening in, in Nashville, which is like, Bitcoin is starting to find itself a space in almost every industry. The fact that Fold went, uh, you know, had an IPO, I think is a very big deal. And the fact that Proton Mail, like you said, is basically a secure way, uh, you know, private, a privacy first email system for them to roll out a Bitcoin wallet is super cool because if they don't already have it, I could foresee the future where I'm going to, you know, message Tyler at Proton Mail and I'm going to be able to just send you money that way. Like that will be tied to your Bitcoin wallet, right? you know, so the communication level, the kind of playing well in the sandbox with people's mortgages, I think is really great. And then building into that things that were really obviously top of mind. And I'm sure everyone in Bitcoin has seen this. So I'm not going to say anything maybe new, but I think it's really important for us to take into account is the political implications that Bitcoin now has. The three biggest speakers, I think, for politics at the 
uh, event where Se Senator Loomis uh, from Wyoming, uh, presidential candidate for the independent, uh, for, for independence, uh, RFK Jr. And then obviously Donald Trump who garnered, you know, they filled the room. Um, I was waiting in line for about an hour and 10 minutes, didn't end up actually getting in like many other people. And we went to watch in a walk in a in a watch room. But, you know, what Senator Loomis said is basically we're going to try to get away. You know, she, she she's writing a bill. How do we get a million dollars? Excuse me. How do we get a million Bitcoin um, on U.S. balance sheet as a way for the United States to move itself forward? RFK kind of one up that and he's like, we're going to buy 550 Bitcoin a day until we get to four million Bitcoin. OK. And then Donald Trump maybe wasn't on those levels. He just said, we're going to have a reserve strategy around Bitcoin. So all of those things are really, really bullish. And I want to just call it the interesting way that politics is starting to play a role in Bitcoin, because for so long, and even in the white paper, when you look, it's like Bitcoin wasn't supposed to be a thing that needed co-signing of institutions or government, and it still doesn't. But it's interesting how stateside, especially Republicans and more of the right and the conservative are really opening up and kind of latching onto it. And they're doing so at an, a point and at an amount that it's actually pulling people on the left and the progressives uh, and liberals and Democrats to say, hey, maybe we need to not only be open to this, but even have our own strategy and have our own kind of campaign commitments. So that was kind of an interesting to see play out in real time. And we're still seeing that today. And I think I mentioned this to you, but Senator Loomis just came out and I want to make sure I say this right. She just came out with a 10 page PDF that's entitled Powering Down Progress, Why a Bitcoin Mining Tax Hurts America. And she just dropped this today. It's on our X. I'll also leave that link in this uh, episode's description. So a lot happening. And I kind of want to ask you as someone who wasn't there, but you were watching it maybe from 30,000 feet via socials or other people you follow or just talking to even compass employees that, that were there. What was your feeling? What were some takeaways? What was something that you saw from the outside looking in uh, from the event that's maybe newsworthy or something to even mention here? Yeah, I think I'll just reflect on kind of what you said, because uh, all the banter from behind social was just on the politics side. Uh, I didn't even know that that document came out. So that's that's wild in itself. But I, I keep coming back to Trump, you know, his last campaign or yeah, his last campaign, he like crapped on Bitcoin. And now four years later, you know, more four, yeah, whatever, four years later, he's like talking it up now and coming up with a strategy to kind of acquire it for the United States. It's just like, I don't know, people are kind of being forced to be educated on this. And as we all know, once you learn about it, you can't unlearn it and you you just you can't unsee it. So I think it's the same for him. I think it's the same for all these politicians. And I don't know, he doesn't typically speak about things he's not knowledgeable on. So I have to have a feeling that, you know, he kind of understands it and he's starting to see the importance of it for like a global play. Yeah, it is interesting to think that beyond just Trump, the fact that a candidate of a leading political party in the United States spoke at the Bitcoin conference and has probably a 50 50 chance of becoming the next president. Some people say it's higher. Some people say it's lower. You know, you could look at the polls to see who's leading between he and Kamala right now. Unfortunately, RFK doesn't really have a chance, even though I think from a Bitcoin's a Bitcoiner standpoint, he's the probably the person who I would rather see if we're just focusing on single issue voter being Bitcoin. But I think it is a surreal thing. And as you said, many people have called it out. They're like, hey, not even that long ago, he said this is basically all the FUD. This is a scam. It's going to endanger the dollar. And now not only Trump, but other people are saying especially this was a feeling that no, Bitcoin helps the dollar. Bitcoin helps to essentially maintain the, hege the, the hegemony that the dollar has. Um, so that's an interesting thing as well uh, to kind of consider. But this, was been, this has been a very interesting check-in because we've kind of talked about a bunch of different things. You've talked about, uh, let's see, Proton having their own wallet. You've talked about Fold's IPO. You talked about BitAx getting one block. And then we've talked a little bit about the political implications that are kind of playing out in real time of Bitcoin in the United States' as context. So anyways, Tyler, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, any final thoughts on this check-in? No, I don't think so. I, uh, yeah, get out there, buy a BitAx, help support the network. Love it. This is great. Love it. The more the more people mining, the better, even if it is at a bit X uh, size. Uh, if you're following this on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're listening to this on the podcast, please subscribe and make sure you're following us on social media for all updates on X, which used to be Twitter, 
LinkedIn and YouTube at Compass Mining. Thanks again for checking this out and we'll see you in the next check-in.